Hey, thank you for returning. We now study about the complex substituents or substituents which themselves may be branched. One such example is this one here. Do you see that this carbon is attached further is a branch because it, is, it has got a free end which is attached to the main chain. So the branch starts from here and this alkyl group is also named just the rules for naming the complex substituent are the same as the ones for the alkane, the branch chain alkane. So we find the longest chain here and Remember, when we find the longest chain in a complex substituent, the numbering is done in such a way that the carbon which is attached to the main chain, that is the parent alkane, always gets the locant one. So this is the first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon. If it has four carbons, then this alkyl group is the butyl group. It is butyl. Now, the butyl group has two methyl groups attached to it. The first branch is at the first carbon itself. Normally, if it was, a, uh, it, it was uh, not a complex, uh, it was just an alkane, the last carbon cannot have a branch. If the last carbon has a methyl group, it means the chain is one carbon longer. But in this case, since it is attached to the main chain, this one is considered the first branch gets a locant one. So this is one, three, dimethyl, one, three, dimethyl, butyl group. One, three, dimethyl, methyl, butyl, but this entire group is a substituent. Therefore, it should also have a locant in the main hydrocarbon. So this is entire thing is put in a bracket and a locant is assigned to this. This locant tells us at which carbon is this entire group attached. Let us say that it was a decane and this group was attached to the fifth carbon. So we would say 5, 1, 3, dimethyl, butyl, whatever, decane. Let us take this example now. Okay, what was the rule here? The carbon which is of such a substituent, which is a branch chain substituent, the carbon of a branch which is attached to the parent is always given the locant 1. And the name of this group is put in parenthesis, that is in a bracket. The rule number 7 is that if two chains are of equal size, then we choose the chain which has more number of side chains. For example, take a look at this hydrocarbon now. What are, let us assign the, uh, find out the longest chain. This is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It has 10 carbons. Let us try and count it this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is also 10. So this hydrocarbon is decane, but it has it can be decane this way and it can be decane this way too. So which one do we choose as the parent chain? The straight chain or this one, the zigzag one? Then this says that if two chains are of equal size, then we have to choose the chain which has more number of side chains. If we take this as the parent chain, it has one side chain and the second side chain. But if I choose this as the parent chain, then this whole group will become one branch. This would be one branch and this would be one branch. This has three branches. So this has a larger number of branches. And hence, this would be our parent chain. Then, how would we number it? According to our numbering, we have to give it the lowest sum of locates. So this will be carbon 1, 2, 3, because these two will get 3, 3. 4, 5, this one will get the locant 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 3, 3 dimethyl. The decane is okay, but what about this? What is the substituent at the fifth place? This is the first carbon because it's a complex substituent. It is first carbon, second carbon. An ethyl group is attached to the second carbon. So what is the name of the substituent? It is 2. This would be 
two sorry yeah two ethyl butyl and you put this in bracket and this two ethyl butyl is attached to which carbon the fifth carbon two ethyl butyl imagine that it's in continuation now let me write the name here five two ethyl butyl then these two locants three three di methyl decane would be the name of this compound five two ethyl butyl three sorry there will be comma here three three di methyl decane Am I clear? Now if I, let's name this one. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's try to choose another chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is octane. So no name is bigger. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, again octane. So we will choose this as the parent chain. So this is no name. No name. And what about this branch now? It is at the fifth carbon. And what is the longest chain? This is the first carbon, second carbon, third carbon. So it is propyl group. This is a propyl group. It should be in a bracket because it's a complex substituent. Propyl, no name, and what what are the two substituents here? It is two two dimethyl propyl, so it will be two two dimethyl propyl. But what at what position are the two two dimethyl propyl attached to the main chain? The fifth carbon, so it will be five. 2, 2, dial, methyl, propyl, no name. Clear? So, this was naming of branching hydrocarbons. And the eighth rule was that on choosing the chain, numbering is done closer to the substituent. The numbering is done closer to the substituent. Yes, obviously, the numbering would always be done closer to the substituent. We now come according to lowest sum of locants rule. We now come to cyclic compounds. When you have cyclic compounds, then we write the word root which gives us the name, number of carbon atoms. We write the ane, in or ion which tells us whether the compound is such. Since we are dealing with alkanes, we only write ane. But if the alkane is cyclic in nature, then we add the primary prefix cyclo to it. And otherwise, the rules basically are the same. Now, for example, this is a structure which shows you a pentagon. A pentagon represents the corners of the pentagon, the structures, they represent carbon atoms. And the lines are the bonds between the carbon atoms. And whatever is not written is assumed that is filled up, those valencies are filled up by hydrogen. In other words, this is actually CH2, 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 CH2. Similarly, the ends also represent CH3s and the joints represent CH2s. So what is this compound? This is cyclopentane. What would this compound be? This is a hexane. It's a cyclohexane but it has got substituents. It has got a methyl group here and CH2, CH2, CH3. So that is a propyl group. So, methyl and propyl, which comes first alphabetically? Methyl. Since methyl comes first, this is cyclohexane. And give the locants again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We treat this as the first carbon. So, this will be 1 methyl. 
propyl cyclohexane. Is that clear? But look at this compound now. This has got two methyl groups, CH3, CH3, and here is a, this is an ethyl group. This is also cyclohexane, but it has three substituents, methyl, methyl, and ethyl. Here we do not follow the numbering according to lowest, the one which is, we don't give it more preference because ethyl is alphabetically smaller than methyl. Here we give more importance to the lowest sum of low case. So this would be 1, 1, dimethyl, 3, ethyl, cyclohexane. Unlike how we do it for straight chain hydrocarbons, where we give importance to the, to the alphabetical order, here we do not give importance to the alphabetical order. We give more importance to uh, the number of branches at lower locus. So the name of this compound is 1,1-dimethyl-3-ethyl-cyclohexane. So that was the naming of branched chain alkanes. Thank you for watching.